Welcome to the Multimedia Over Coax Alliance MOCA Technical Overview on Remote MOCA Network Password Provisioning for Users' Self-Installs. MOCA technology is a universal backbone for Wi-Fi and 5G environments and is a high-performance and cost-effective extension for fiber to the building and DOCSIS installations. With us today is Dr. Philippe Klein, Vice Chair of the MOCA Specification Group and one of the architects. Dr. Klein and the MOCA Specification Group have developed an efficient method for how a new MOCA node can be provisioned with a MOCA network password, thus allowing this node to be admitted to a MOCA network that runs in privacy mode, all without any user intervention, which is key for user self-installs. Dr. Klein. Hello everyone. This short overview describes how, without any user intervention, a new MOCA node can be provisioned with a MOCA network password, allowing this node to be admitted to a MOCA network that runs in privacy mode. To guarantee that the password is not provided to a rogue device, the new MOCA device must first be authenticated by the service provider. The device must include a feature that allows this authentication. This could be a secure device ID, a digital certificate, or any other object function of the authentication protocol selected by the service provider. This protocol is vendor or service provider specific. It runs over the MOCA Mac layer and therefore is agnostic to MOCA. The MOCA password provisioning is based on the MOCA pre-admission transport service common to all the MOCA 2 and up versions. Let me briefly describe this transport service. The MOCA pre-admission transport service is a simple transport service that allows the upper layers of the MOCA network controller to communicate with the upper layers of a given MOCA new node prior to the new node admission to the MOCA network. The transport service is based on message containers. Their contains are transparent to the MOCA MAC file layers and they are not encrypted by the transport service. The peer-to-peer -peer privacy between the upper layers of the NC and a given node is provided by the container payload be encrypted with a pairwise share secret key by the upper layer protocol that uses the MOCA pre-admission transport service. The service is stateless, UDP-like. Neither segmentation of large messages nor retries are provided by the transport service. Both should be handled by the protocol using this transport service. The MOCA pre-admission transport service access point provides two simple primitives to transmit and receive messages between two MAC clients as shown in this figure. These primitives are identical in both directions from the NC to the new node and from the new node to the NC. Now that the MOCA pre-admission transport service had been detailed, we could describe how the MOCA network password could be provisioned on a MOCA 2.0 device over the coax medium. In the first step, a vendor or service provider specific protocol runs on the NC and the new device over the MOCA pre-admission transport service. This protocol first authenticates the new MOCA device. In the second step, after the device is successfully authenticated, the protocol transmits inbound in a secure way such an encrypted tunnel, the MOCA network password 
to the new MOCA device. In the third and last step, once provisioned with the MOCA network password, the new MOCA device may get admitted on the MOCA network that runs in privacy mode. The sequence to provision MOCA 2.5 and up devices is almost identical to the sequence for MOCA 2.0 except for one step. The vendor or service provider specific protocol needs only to authenticate the new device but does not need to transport the network password. Let me detail why. First, the new device needs to be authenticated. This initial step is identical to the authentication step described previously for MOCA 2.0 device and in fact is common for all MOCA devices. This device authentication can be performed with the same vendor or service provider specific protocol and credential regardless of the MOCA version of the device to provision. However, once the device is successfully authenticated, the provisioning could take advantage of the MOCA protected setup protocol supported by MOCA 2.5 and UP devices to transmit the MOCA network password from the NC to the new MOCA device instead of using as for MOCA 2.0 the vendor or service provider specific protocol. Finally, the new MOCA device now provisioned with the MOCA network password may get admitted on the MOCA network that runs in privacy mode. Let me show in this example the handshakes that take place between an NC and a new MOCA 2.5 device to provision this new device with the MOCA network password over the coax medium. The first handshake is a standard authentication method handshake transported on MOCA pre-admission service containers between the NC and the new node. The indication of the device successful authentication triggers on both the NC and the new node the MOCA protected setup which results in the MOCA network password provision on the new device. The new MOCA device can then get admitted on the MOCA network which runs in privacy mode. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Klein, thank you for providing this tutorial on remote MOCA network password provisioning. For more information on this and other MOCA technology standards, visit www.mochalliance.org.